God's speaking about something specific. Over this last several weeks, we've been on our way to the river. Right now, we're actually in the midst of river glory. And it's not a series of sermons. It just happens to be. I keep preaching on river. And I just want you to understand that everything we need is in the river. All that we need is in the river. We referred to a scripture several times through the past many weeks. In Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God. Come on, everybody repeat and say, My God. We need to understand, shall supply all your need in glory. In glory. There are so many things we could mention that could be found in the river. But there, there is, in fact, an abundant supply of anything you can name. Does anybody here have anything they could name? I hope you have more than one. But here's one that probably wasn't put in that river according to your list. Holiness is found in the river. Oh, I'm sure some of you had finances, maybe a new car, maybe a new house, maybe healing, maybe a miracle, maybe salvation. But most of us didn't find or even probably even think off the top of our head, holiness. An abundance of holiness in the river. See, many of us worry about approaching God's throne. Here's the, here's the reason I'm talking about holiness for a moment. Because many of us, we don't want to even approach the throne of God because we feel that there's something in our life that causes us to be disqualified. From going before the throne of grace. See, holiness is not you just being a pure person. Holiness means that you stand right in God's sight. Does anybody here stand right in God's sight? Sometimes. Frequently. Or every once in a while. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, you can't be pure unless you are immersed in the purity of the river. See, the, the river is pure. And when you spend time in the river of God's glory, you become pure. See, the hardest water can be purified, can be cleansed. When you get into the river... You get river glory into your soul. Whether you know it or not, when you spend time in the presence of God, in the glory of God, in the river of God's glory, you get contaminated by it. Things that you used to say, you don't say anymore. Things you used to do, you don't do anymore. Things you used to think, you don't think anymore. Gradually, it goes away. Some of us faster, some of us slower, but it goes away. And sometimes you're like, I don't do that anymore. Why? Because it's the river. How many have had some really dirty clothes? I mean, you just know. You don't have to look at it. Know it's, you don't have to smell them to see if they're dirty. Sometimes, especially if you've got children, you don't have to smell those things to know that they're dirty. You just look at them. Hallelujah. You're like, dirty, 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 clean. Hallelujah. What happens when you take that thing and put it into a washer? It gets moved around. Gets tossed around. Gets put through a process of washing a all the dirt away. 
Most of the time, it all comes out. Hallelujah. But see, in the river, it all comes out. Come on, how many have ever heard the saying, it all comes out in the wash? Come on, somebody, it's actually been proven. Somebody eats a penny, it will come out. I don't encourage putting pennies in your body. But if you eat a penny, it will come out. You might not necessarily see it, unless you're going to look for it, but it will come out. And the reason I'm saying some of these things is because we're getting ready to get unfolded. We're getting ready to have open heart supernatural surgery to where the things that's been tripping us up, the things that's been keeping us from going before the throne of God and really being able to go and know that we have a God-given right to stand before God. See, that's one thing. How many know sometimes you have one person in your house is the go-to person when it comes to the things of God? Maybe you ought to go to the throne. It's like, go, go talk to your father. Why don't you go talk to him? We all should be able to go before the throne of God. You should be able to go right into heaven, walk in there, and know that you have a God-given right to stand before him. To request every request. And know that it's right for you to be able to do so. Holiness comes from God, not you. God is holy. You submerge yourself in Him, you get some holy. See, the river is conducive to repentance. How many know that when you're around the presence of God, you repent more? Come on. You get moved to repent. You start considering, man, I, this ain't right. Some people should repent every day. You should take a list and say, okay, when I said this to mommy, I said this to Bill, I said this one, I, said, I did this one. I, when I said, oh, I remember what I did to her. And I repent. I ask for forgiveness. Now, sometimes you might have so much that you could just say all the above. Hallelujah. It depends on the day. Depends on how much ice cream and candy you get. Hallelujah. See, when you feel great, waters of God washing over you, repenting is no longer a struggle. You want to repent. When you jump in a shower after you've been playing in the mud, it's like you got in to repent. And the more you're in there, the more it all washes away. That's what you could think about when, when you are actually repenting. Think of a shower. The river of God's glory washes over you, and all that dirt goes down the drain to never be remembered again. How many have ever took a shower and saved your dirt that came off your body? Come on, wouldn't that be foul? I take a little cup of it and say, oh, that was July 3rd. I sprayed my sister with a hose and it turned into World War III. Hallelujah. See, when you feel the great waters washing over you, it's not any struggle to repent. It comes so easy just to say, God, forgive me. When you do repent, you find a wealth of grace because when you stay in that river, just consumed by that river, you will have wealth of, a wealth of grace and mercy Awaiting you every time you repent. It's like a continuous bath. It is a healing balm. B-A-L-M. 
which awaits all those who seek God's waters. Purity of heart is a wonderful thing. How many have ever been so messed up on the inside to where you was always having to watch over your shoulder? You was always having to remember your last lie. Come on, anybody honest here now? Hallelujah. You used to have so much stuff that you almost forgot you had so much stuff. When you get freed, you don't ever have to be concerned. Come on. Your wife picks up your wallet. You don't have to get concerned because you know there's nothing in there. I'm not talking about the money part. I'm talking about secrets. Come on. Hallelujah. The river washes away your secrets. It gets you to the place to where you'd be like, log in, mommy. Look at my grades. They're fine. Instead of trying to figure out a way to unplug the internet while she's trying to log in. I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just get to a place to where we get so nervous and shaky. How many like to feel like that? How many like to have hidden secrets? How many like to have hidden sin? Am I just preaching to the city? See, I don't know about you, but man, I had, it's like I live in a different life. You live one way one place and one way another, and then you, you get so consumed by it that you, work, you don't know where you're at anymore. Then you're trying to cover it all up. Makes you sick. See, in the river, there is abundant supply of anything you can name, and all that you ever could ever even need is in the river. And holiness is your ticket to always stay in the river. Holiness. I like to call it W. Come on. H. Some of you won't get this. Hallelujah. O L E. Whole. With a dash and then the rest of it. I'm telling you, you got to understand holiness. You become whole. You're no longer broken. You're no longer battered. You're no longer sick. You're no longer afflicted. No longer unpure. You are so whole that the enemy has no hold on you. There is great liberty in the river. When you are really in the river of God's glory, there's liberty. You know why some people never dance and shout and praise the Lord? It's because they have no liberty. It's very hard sometimes for a bound person to worship the Lord. Many of us have been familiar with the Holy Spirit and His works for some time. But I want you to understand, we have now, we have sometimes even considered ourselves experts. How many here have considered yourself sometimes as an expert of the way the Holy Spirit does it? The way the Holy Spirit moves in your life. Oh, I know what He's getting ready to do. Man, when we I've been in revival and I used to have a bunch of know-it-alls. Anybody ever have know-it-all around you? They just they're like, "Oh, I knew it. I knew it." And they didn't know nothing. Don't tell me after the fact that you knew it. Tell me beforehand. Come on, God's getting ready to do something. Tell me. Don't tell me after it happened. Say, "Oh yeah, I saw that." And, but there's all kinds of people that used to be around me, and they would constantly always always just get so puffed up that they knew more about the Holy Spirit than anyone else. When you're in the river of God's glory, it's not about anything here. It's all about in here. You spend time in the river, you become the river.
See, sometimes we get so consumed, we become part of the problem. Is anybody hearing me? Sometimes we become part of the problem. You can know so much that you become the problem. It's, here's a good example. If a teacher tells you something that you think is wrong, you close up to everything else for that moment because they were wrong. You're like, oh, no, you are wrong. You, you are wrong. I know that you were wrong. So you start rejecting all the other things that might be said because you're so caught up in the wrong. You say, why are you saying this to me? Like, I've never done that. Sometimes we get so consumed, and I'm telling you, when you know more than God, that's what happens sometimes. When it comes to the flow of the Spirit, we get to know so much of the Spirit of God moving in our life. We think we know more than God Himself. You know what that means? It means you are the biggest hindrance of the Spirit of God moving in your midst. I have been blessed to be of many revivals. I've been blessed to prophesy to thousands. I've been blessed to be part of ministries and all these different things and to have healing flow and see miracles, signs, and wonders, some of the most powerful things. And I believe some of the things I've experienced in my life almost rarely anybody else has. And I know that because of the magnitude of some things that's happened in my life. But at the same time, I am a vessel. I am just a vessel. What God does in my life is just because he can. And I just want to soak in the river. It's not about what I know. It's about who I know. And I'm telling you, it gets so much sometimes that we know exactly what to do, exactly how to do it, exactly when to do it. That becomes nothing but a hindrance. Some people are trying to orchestrate revival based on another revival. It doesn't work. It's not going to start up. Come on. I can have brand new car and brand new keys, but if the keys don't go to the car, it's not going to start it. Hallelujah. Whoo. See, we get so much, I, we think we know exactly how to do it, and so often have gotten this in the Spirit's way, the Holy Spirit's way, when we think we know how to do it. How many have ever tried to help a baby who has a stubborn day? They could be trying to get a triangle, put in a square hole, and you think, man, I'm just going to help them out. I'm going to tell them which one it goes in, and, and, and it's all of a sudden it turns into madness. Come on. They're like, no! It goes in there. Trying to break the box just to get it in. Sometimes we don't realize, sometimes we get in our own way. We get in the Spirit's way. The Holy Spirit knows every move that needs to be made. And everything, what I'm talking about right now is part of what we just passed up. And that is about hosting the presence of God. We are not here to drive the vehicle. We're here to ride in the vehicle. Sometimes you've got to be like, calm down. You have a shape that doesn't fit in this hole. It fits over here. And then they slip it through like they just got a victory. See, sometimes we don't realize we're like little babies. And we become a hindrance. Quenching the Spirit of God. If you know too much, sometimes you'll quench the Spirit of God. You'll get right in the way. I used to minister with guessing prophets. You know what a guessing prophet is? Somebody that looks at you and they go, uh, uh, God's healing something in your leg. Oh, no, that was wrong. Uh, maybe your back. 
Uh, that was wrong, too. Uh, how about your head? You might as well just start with your eyes, your ears, the mouth, the nose, to just go down until you find one. Come on. The reason I'm saying some of these things is because the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, quench not the spirit. See, what's most important in the things of God is we're not supposed to quench the spirit. The church is so concerned about offending a person instead of they end up offending the spirit. See, sometimes God's going to be like, okay, we've worshipped about 45 minutes. Let's worship for another 45 minutes. What are you guys going to do? Some of you, if it wasn't announced, you'd probably be like, all right, it should be about over. If I knew it was going to be this long, I'd have paced myself. See, if God wants to worship three hours, he can worship three hours. In many circles, when anyone begins to speak in tongues, the worship leader has been instructed to start singing a chorus to drown out the word. Come on. Now, in our ministry, we don't like people just to release the word because it needs to be submitted. But there, there was a time whenever people just all of a sudden, and all of a sudden you would notice in many churches, as soon as that starts taking place, there would be a whole different beat taking place from the worship leader. And what they're doing is they're using the sound system to try to drown out that person. Come on. See, They don't want anybody to be disturbed by it. See, sometimes we get more concerned about somebody being disturbed when we end up disturbing the only one that's important, the Holy Spirit. See, when someone begins to dance in the Spirit, ushers many times will instruct them to sit down. Now here, as long as they have everything covered to a certain degree and they're not provocative, let God roll. See, we have known more than God. You know what? God's going to move on somebody that's going to annoy us. God's going to move on somebody that's going to just annoy us in a fun way. Do you remember the fire up at, front, at the park? It annoyed a lot of the school of the supernatural. Fire of God hit this young lady, and she went to the school like an energizer bunny, like somebody gave her Mountain Dew with a bag of candy. She's like, is anybody hot in here? I don't know, but I'm hot in here. How about anybody else? Uh, come on. She was like 12 years old, I think, because she was anointed of God, and she was full of the Spirit of God. And you know what happened? People who'd been in church for years were offended. They were like, quiet down. So I kept turning her up. Come on. See, we get to the place we think we know more than God. See, God is the one that put the fire upon the young lady. So you got to understand, if God puts a fire on somebody, it isn't always going to look right. It's not always going to sound right. It's not going to have a religious sound. They might not be quoting scripture. They might not be prophesying to anybody. They might not be doing anything, but just talking fast. What's going on? I don't know why. Is it bright in here or is it just me? It's still the fire. And see, we're like, oh, no, put it out. Put it out. Somebody play a song. Let's drown them out. Hushers, carry her out. Throw her in the lake. Throw her in the lake. Oh, sorry. 
I think a couple of them might have that day. What's funny is we were at a school of supernatural. So God moves supernaturally upon a girl, and people got offended. Isn't that amazing? Come on. See, I'm saying some of these things because we don't even know what God is getting ready to do, and we could really never really try to say we do. We're supposed to host the presence of God, not get in the way of it, not try to quench it. See, when God, we say, God, move in my church. I want you to move. I want the revival fire. He's going to start hitting people. They're going to start falling on the floor. Some will spit. Some will shout. Some will roll. Some will shake. And whatever takes place is part of it. You can't pick and choose. I like this one. Yeah, I want that one in velvet. I want that one. I like that one. Give me a plaid of that. But I don't want this one over here. I just don't like it. You either accept the Holy Spirit whole. The whole of the Holy Spirit. The whole thing. The whole package. Every part of him. Or you don't receive him at all. Thank you, Jesus. See, we have known everything that we did not want to happen. How many have ever known more about what you didn't want to happen? Come on. I was in a tent meeting and about ten flamboyant young men came in, all dressed in the most feminine outfits. Everything, just all dainty. They were all (laughs) full of spirits. Many leaders were trying to instruct ushers to carry them out. The speaker instructed the team to lay hands on them. Come on. You say lay hands on no one quickly. Hallelujah. You got to understand there's times when God wants to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he wants to move powerfully. you got to understand. And we ask for God to move and touch the entire world. Guess what? The entire world's coming. Come on. It, they're going to just show up and you're going to be like, what? Look at that. What's that? They're not like us. What do you think the world is? Have you been in the world? Has anybody ever been in the world? Come on, I've been in revivals where they see somebody come in, they sit down, and you can see the thong hanging out. And they're like, what are they doing in church? Isn't that where they should be? Come on. We don't have to like it when they get there, but understand when the purity of God's word comes forth, they will realize, they will reflect, they will look at what is coming forth, and they will cover those things up. They will not be the way they came into the doors if we allow the Spirit of God to move and touch their lives. Come on. But man, the people used to flip out. (gasps) What are they wearing? We had one girl that looked like she always left the street corner and came to church. Business was slow, so she came to church. I'm serious. Not kidding at all. Just because she gave it for free doesn't mean. Come on. She'd come in and she would actually want a prayer cloth to cover up with. Because she wanted to be there. I'm telling you, God's about to move in a way that we've never seen before. And we need to be accepting at the same time of being cautious, but at the same time of just allowing God to move however he's going to move. And not think that we know better than he does. He will draw them in. Guess what that means? Drawing them in. They're all going to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) The freaks are coming. That's what God told me one time. The freaks are coming. I almost was offended by it, thinking, oh, that's the devil. And here's how he fixed that. He said, you were a freak. Come on. 
Hallelujah. Come on. I had to walk into a church with my hard uh, self at the time. I had to walk in some door of a church that didn't look like I should be there. I had to walk through the doors and, and not really fit in. I had to walk in sometime. I'm telling you, we all have to understand. God is getting ready to touch somebody, and he's going to move on people. And guess what? Religion is going to reject all these different ones. But guess what? What God is getting ready to do in revival across the United States of America and many churches and many places it will be accepting, the church will be accepting people to come and to receive what God has. Everything we need is in the river. It's all in there. See, we get to the place we, we think we know what ought to happen, what should happen next. Isn't that the way it is? And it's like, oh, yeah, the pastor's got the microphone. We know what it, it's about to change. The order's about to change. Come on, he's got the pamphlet. Now we've yeah, we got to go through the announcements. Sometimes we can time by our watch what time to get to church when God starts actually getting to move. Is anybody getting to hear this? See, we have not learned what the Spirit desires for us and He wants to do in our midst. We really have not learned it. See, the answer is simple. The Spirit of God is in the river. He wants us to present ourselves before him as an empty channel through which he can flow. Come on, he wants you to come as an empty channel that he can flow because he is the river. Let him flow. Give him room to move. See, he is the water of life, and he is looking for a dry river bed that he can inhabit and flow through. He's looking for you. That's why I say we are hosting the presence of God. We're allowing him to do whatever he's going to do, and we're willing to allow him to use us to be like a hose to where all we are is the vessel in which the fluid, the liquid, the water, the river goes through. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You cannot contain the river. You cannot control the river. You can only present yourself as a willing channel of its flow. See, sometimes I think we, we think we have control of what God wants to do. And the only thing you have is you're supposed to pull the handle and just let the water flow through you. And if you don't like something that's flowing, you let go, and what you're doing is quenching the Spirit. We're just supposed to let it flow. How many know that 10 years ago, some of you were more religious than you are now? Come on. Some of you, if you saw somebody shaken under the power of God in one of these seats, you would just move on. You'd be like, let's continue the service. Hallelujah, God's touching them. 10 years ago, you probably would have been like, could somebody do something about that? Come on. Come on. I've been in services where people are not just slain in the spirit, but they're piled in the spirit. 
Come on. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right here. In all different ways. How many know? That's not normal. Come on, you're not going to tune in to Joel staying service and, and probably see that on a Sunday morning. It, I mean, I wish you would. I really wish God would just impact you. But I'm telling you, it's just one of those things. I'm telling you, when God starts moving, we got to let the river flow. Just let the river flow. <laughs> See, when God said he was going to move during the revival, he said, when I come, I bring a mess. That was his first words, I bring a mess. And I began to think, man, I don't know about this. And then I didn't even know what it was. I didn't even have a clue. And then when he started doing stuff, I'm like, things are really messy. We used to have everything just perfect, so organized. Everything was in its place. There was nothing out of place. Now we got chairs that get knocked all over. We get all kinds of stuff happening. We got people piled up in the foyer, piled up in the sanctuary. We got people everywhere. And, and, and God's just hitting everything. See, sometimes we want God to move the way we want God to move. But guess what? God's going to move the way he's going to move if you just let him go. I don't know about you, but I don't want to control revival. I want the river of God's glory, and I want to host his presence and say, come. However you want to do it, just come. You say, what if we get a bunch of freaks Every revival has freaks. They're going to walk in. Why? Because they're being drawn. The river of God's glory is like a bug zapper. Draws them in. Come on, got to get them. My grandpa always had those things. Come on. I just go and look at it, just watching these bugs fly into it like they were all in there. It's like, it was like, some kind of mission to commit suicide. But I'm telling you, we just don't even know what God's getting ready to do. We have not seen it before. It's never been done before. It's a brand new thing. God said, he said over and over and over again, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. Guess what? He's getting ready to do it. We are right in the midst of him getting us ready. He says, I want you to be a channel. I just want you to be a reservoir. I just want to use you. So in other words, we need to lock our hose faucet to full blast on. Lock the little thing and just let it flow. You say, what if it doesn't look right? God had, just like God said, I believe he just said last week. If you need more security, I've got that covered. If you need this, I've got that covered too. If you need this, I've got it covered. We will do just fine because I've got it all covered. Everything that we need is in the river. Everything that is in need of is in the river. Everything, everything and anything, all things, anything is in the river. If there's something that's going to be needed in the river, it's there. supposed to be a riverbed. What's a riverbed? It just lets the river go. Can the riverbed change direction of the river? Can the riverbed control what the river is going to do? No. That water is going to go. However, and the bed is just a container. That's what we are. Come on, we're just a bunch of riverbeds. See, let the river of life flow through you, and your bed will become greatly enlarged. How often we attempt to control the flow of the river. 
Sometimes we try to control it because we think somebody's not ready for it. Visitor shows up. You know what? Let the river flow. What if they freak out and leave? It won't be the first time. And it sure won't be the last. Come on. Come on. I was told that a television crew was coming to the revival years ago, and they were, there was a whole bunch of producers and all kinds of high-name people were coming. And, and that morning, all the board of directors told me to try to control myself. Come on. God's moving. Every service, I'm sometimes preaching from my back because the glory hits so strong. Control myself. Of course, that was a service where I could hardly control myself. They would have thought I was crazy. But these people were impacted. The glory of God was hitting them and touching their life. Come on. Ended up continuing to touch their life even at Ruby Tuesdays. Hallelujah. After the service. Come on. And just continue to touch. And they started trying to witness to waitresses. Trying to tell them, you know what I saw this morning? Come on, they were on fire. They were like, I knew there was something, but I didn't know what it was. And they said, but what I found is it's something new. Now, come on, that was many years ago. That was several years back. And if that was something new then, in a controlled river, how much more is God going to be able to do when we just say, we're the bed for your flow. Just let it flow, God. Full throttle. You can have your way. And if it's something is out of whack, you know how to fix it. We get so concerned. We're always trying to control. So, oh, wait a minute. They might not like it. Oh, the tithers don't like it when he's dancing. Come on. Sometimes Sam gets set on fire more when we have visitors right behind him. Come on. He'll be like sitting and just worshiping and, and clapping his hands every now and then. But sometimes a visitor, just one shows up with religion. And all of a sudden he's high. And I'm telling you, I don't care. Because the river's just going to flow. Guess what? The river had the flow to break my religion. How many here? Let me, I'm going to say what I mean to say. Every person in this room still has some religion. What I mean by that is if somebody started doing something crazy at a certain moment, we look at them and go, oh, this can't be right. Guess what? Sometimes the not perfect isn't always wrong. God's going to move on somebody. God's going to touch somebody. God's going to move on a group. God's going to hit an old house. God's going to slay everybody in the spirit. See, I've been in services where 50% of the crowd was religious. And every person ends up on their face before the Lord. That's the river of God flowing. One minute they have their arms crossed, the next minute they're on their face bawling before the Lord. Saying, we want a move of God. Sometimes it's those crazy things that will set a person on fire. That we are trying to be careful not to offend. See, sometimes we think, oh, they're not ready for it. I've even known pastors to try to control themselves. God's getting ready to move. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I was getting a little too off the ground. Then they go back to the pulpit, and it's almost like they put their religious pants on. God is really getting ready to touch us. See, how many times have we hindered the flow of the Spirit because some important person is coming to the meeting? Every meeting we have, we have an important person come. 
His name is Jesus. Come on. He's internationally known in many, multiple universes. He's known <laughs> more than any person. Come on. He's known more than Michael Jackson was. Come on. Hallelujah. He's known more than even Donald Trump is. Come on. He's known more than everyone. And I'm telling you, and he is the most important person that will ever step foot into a service. And if he is not happy, then we should not even have a move of God. Only one person was happy about that. And Ben's like, yeah, me too. Hallelujah. He's a quiet supporter. Hallelujah. He's an absentee voter. Hallelujah. Just having fun. See, sometimes it's someone who we thought was too immature to appreciate spiritual things. We try to adjust for them. Come on. I've had it with people who just got born again, and I've had it with people who have been 30 years in the church. God can impact all of them. I've been in services where the whole row of people will have folded arms, bickering back and forth, hating every minute of the service. And I just be led by the Spirit of God to continue to walk by them, and then all of a sudden I touch one of them, and the whole row goes down. Crossed arms and all. Well, let's not offend them. You know, God doesn't, he doesn't offend. He just comes in. Let the river flow. God knows where to take it. He knows where to stop it. He knows where to put it. He knows how to handle it. Sometimes we get to the place to where we think another time would be better for God to move on them. They're going through something right now. You know what? That is usually wrong. Sometimes God is big on pouncing right when somebody is ripe and ready. We try to be all careful. Out of the mouth of babes. See, guess what? God's going to move in the days ahead, and he's even going to use a baby. Come on, I've seen my three-year-old playing with angels. I've seen it in the spirit. I've seen it, I've seen it in the natural when I really don't even know what's going on. She'll just run to the window, and she'll go, bye-bye. But I said, who? She goes, they go. What? Come on, how many know we all are going to be left behind by a lot of people if when the elementary people begin to rise up and be very sensitive to the Spirit of God and they allow, a three-year-old allows the Spirit of God to move. It's going to change our world. We're going to be looking and going, how did that happen? See, God delights in doing things. And we have no right to try to control people who are starving for God. If God wants to touch somebody, he's going to touch them. We might as well just let it happen. Come on. See, we think we know... <laughs> We think we know too much. Sometimes God's moving on somebody, and they're just sitting still, not even moving. We think, oh, they're just dead. They're not even being touched. And sometimes those are the ones hearing the most, receiving the most. Sometimes I think these girls don't hear a thing, 
until they start quoting it back at me. Kind of rough to hear from your teenager, death and life and the power of the tongue. What? Hallelujah. Come on, how many know your kids will preach to you? Come on. They don't sometimes like to hear the preaching, but sometimes they'll preach to you. Mm-hmm. Aren't you excited? See, we need to stop spoon feeding. And let God have his way. See, sometimes we're trying to give people a baby spoon. I mean, God's like wanting to shovel it in. If he wants to bring people quickly into many experiences, let him do it. We say, oh, that might be too fast. They can't see us flippered or flopping. They can't see us being hit with the power of God. They can't hear us moaning and groaning. No, that's exactly what they need. If I knew then what I know now, man, I'd be just swimming all the time. Come on, if I knew when I was was young in the Lord and may have been protected from the Spirit of God moving, how dare anybody protect the Spirit of God from moving because of what they think people can handle? God is the Spirit. He knows what they can handle. If he wants to move, touch, heal, set free, deliver, and cause manifestations, then guess what? Let him come, move, have his way. Just let him do it. Too many of us miss the benefits of the river because we are too afraid of it or afraid of how it might get out of control. The river's going to come. We think, oh, it's going to get out of control. We better wrap it up. We better go to the next place. We better, we better shift this thing. We better shift it back into low because we're about to lift off. See, sometimes we could try to control out of order because we're, th- we're, we're afraid we can't control it. That's why God said last week, if you need security, I've got it covered. If you need this, I've got that covered too. Whatever you need, I've got it covered. Why did he say, why would God say stuff like that if there wasn't going to be a need for it? Come on. I've been in churches where, where, where they tell you to stop, uh, stop worshiping so fast because the people are jumping up and down so much, they're afraid the floor is going to go. You know what? If God's moving, and it's the Spirit of God, it's the river of God, that floor is going to work. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if things get a little out of order sometimes. If God's in control. Come on. It's out of order in our mind, but it's in control by His. What do we get worried about? Our order doesn't heal the sick and deliver the oppressed. It's time to let God institute his order among us. Come on, we got to rejoice in the liberty of the river. The Lord himself sets patterns. We are not to set the pattern. How do you want to flow today, God? Come on, he might say, play one song, pray for the sick. And if you don't get to speak, then don't speak. He might say in the next service, let's worship for two hours. Don't pray for anybody. Just let me sovereignly come down and touch everybody. The next service, he might have prophecy come forth. The next service this, the next service that. I'm telling you, God is in control and we got to let him have his way.
See, God sets his pattern, and then we say, we can do it a different way. But see, we're wrong. If God says, let's do it this way, and we try to do it a different way, that's wrong. If God tells you to do it by laughing, then guess what? We're supposed to laugh. Come on, I've been in services where holy laughter breaks out the whole house. If he tells you to do it by giving, sometimes I've been in a service where the offering has broke out the ministry. Come on. You can't do it another way. If he says the pattern, we have to listen to the voice of God. The Spirit of God is speaking in our services. When he tells us what we will, are supposed to do at certain times, certain things, we must absorb every word and do it according to his word. Don't get in the way. Don't try to shut it down. Don't try to move it a certain way unless he's moving. These are doors that could not possibly have entered. People cannot enter into doors if there's restraints. See, God opens doors. Last week was the river for healing. See, that's a door. See, when the door opens, you've got to let the door open. Stay open. And it needs to flow the way it needs to flow. Come on. It doesn't always have to look pretty. It doesn't always have to come the way that you think it's going to happen. You just got to open it and let God have his way. See, when the river is flowing, there's liberty. And where there's liberty, if, there's, if the liberty is lacking, the river will not be present. In other words, if the Spirit of God is not allowed To be the Spirit of God and to move however He wants, the liberty will come away, will be took away out of the mist. How how many have ever been in a service where it just gets quenched? Just gets killed. Done. See, sometimes... To be such a ministry that's always been about prophetic ministry. That's what I've done for years upon years upon years. Well over 20, probably 25 years by now. A prophetic ministry. And all of a sudden, God gets us to a place to where one night we pray for the sick. One night we do something else. One night we just dismiss. We don't even do anything else. One night prophetic comes forth. And whatever God says, every night you do it. And sometimes people will actually try to get you to continue. They'll pull on you to try to get you to continue to do what you've always done. But guess what? If it's not God's flow, it's not the way to go. Come on. It's about God. It's about His Spirit. And you've got to do what He says to do when He says to do it. You say, why? Well, if it, it, what if I need a word? Hallelujah. Come on. You've got to understand. It's not about pleasing people. Sometimes a prophetic gift has gotten to be pleasing people. Now, don't get me wrong. We will have prophetic. There will be times I'll prophesy to some people. And sometimes there will be times I'll prophesy to a bunch of people. But you've got to understand, we got to understand every service is about being a container. Every service is about being a bed for the river to flow in. And there's different flows every service. Sometimes we try to repeat a service because it was so good. How was we doing it? Come on. Uh, Ryan was over there standing. I was over here on one leg. Come on. You cannot imitate another service. Come on. You can't manufacture the same service to happen to get it again. Even though it was wonderful, it was great, you can't make it happen every time. Different night is a different flow. It's up to us. I think I'm going to close. It's up to us for how much the river power we can use. How much do you want to allow? It's up to you. 
You can allow it to come in a bunch, or you can allow it to come in a trickle. You say, how, I want it my way. Well, then you got the faucet almost off. Here's what God said to me. When you lay hands on someone for their healing, that healing flow touches you in your whole body and begins to heal you in every sickness as you touch those people with healing. So in other words, whenever I pray for people, the healing power touches everything in me that's not of God. You say, why? Because it's a river. Everything the river flows through gets made pure. So when you're praying for the sick, the river flows through. You're healed. When you're prophesying, there's more that happens when you're prophesying. You've got to understand, you get answers. You get things that, that you never had before. Sometimes when you do something, it actually happens for you. Sometimes when you finish prophesying, sounds begin to continue to go through your soul. You get comfort. Come on. Sometimes you feel rhythms of your soul. And maybe for the rest of the night, even after you've gone to bed, you can hear the Holy Ghost singing over you. There's something that happens when you've prophesied a lot. There's times that you just continue to receive ministry. See, the words of the river echo, and, 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 and they vibrate over your soul. The flow touches you. The flow touches everything around you. See, if we allow the river of God to flow, we'll stay young. How many want to stay young? Be renewed like eagles. I don't know about you, but I don't like to hear cracks and pops when I get up. Hallelujah. Come on. We got to let the river flow. When you let the river flow, there is healing power of God that goes into your body. When you let the river flow, the, the vibrations come forth in your, in your own personal life. Here's what God said. I hope you catch this. The fact that you pray for somebody and they get healed, that's a bonus. <laughs> Did you hear that? The fact that if I pray for somebody and they get healed, that's just a bonus. Come on. Allowing the river to flow through me is the main thing that river is supposed to do. This is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. The river of God's glory is about to flow so strong across the earth, but we're going to have to let it flow. Everything we need is in the river. In other words, the whole package of what God can do in our life is in there. If there's a need that we have, it's in there. If there's something that we're supposed to have, it's in there. We need to understand, if there's going to be something necessary that we haven't even thought of, it's in there. If there's anything that causes us to be able to have a revival contained, however we want it to contain, guess what? We can't contain the river. We cannot hinder the river when it comes to, allow, you either allow God to flow or you don't. You can't have it your way. Just let the Spirit of God move. Lord, we just ask right now for your river to flow. Right now in Jesus' name, I ask God that you move on each person in this place. 
prepare us for the river to flow right now in Jesus' name. To allow the Spirit of God to flow so strong in our life that there is going to be abundance of river that flows. Lord, begin to minister to every heart in this place. To be a reservoir. To be a channel for your river. To allow your river to flow in abundance. And Lord, let us be the riverbed that just says, here we are, God. Use me. And just let the river flow. Come on, let's just allow, allow a little bit of time to where we just worship and ask God to touch our lives and just receive of the river right now. God's speaking about something specific. Over those last several weeks, we've been on our way to the river.